And for more reaction to Zelensky's virtual address to Congress, we're joined now by Democratic Senator Mark Warner of Virginia, the chair of the Senate Intelligence Committee. Senator, thanks so much for joining us again. Uh, you heard President Zelensky make his push for a no-fly zone once again, echoing the words of Martin Luther King Jr. to do so. Why wouldn't a limited no-fly zone for humanitarian purposes be effective to allow Ukrainians to escape besieged areas like Mariupol to, to get in food and supplies? Well, Lindsay, I think we were all moved by President Zelensky's appeal. I think we've all been enormously impressed by his courage. We've been obviously impressed by the Ukrainian people. Um, but I th one of the reasons you, I think you're seeing broadly resistance bipartisan to actually putting American or NATO planes in the air, uh, if you put those planes in the air, you'd have to take out Russian anti-aircraft, you have to take out Russian planes. We could be on the verge of um, uh, the unthinkable in terms of direct NATO-Russian war. I think there are ways that we can get a uh, vir kind of a virtual no-fly zone if we provide the Ukrainians with longer range anti-aircraft tools beyond just the shoulder individual shoulder used stingers but other systems and there's some discussions of some of those systems being shipped from from uh, other European allies that could in effect clear the skies um, from from Russian aircraft with that longer range anti-aircraft. Now, President Biden did authorize additional security assistance to Ukraine today, as you know. But is there more that the U.S. and its allies should be doing right now in order to quickly get defensive aid to Ukraine, including more planes or drones, so that they can defend their own skies? There have been very effective use of, of these so-called Turkish drones. The more we can get, they, they can literally be operated by a one- or two-person crew and uh, with direct line of sight. There are some additional drones in that category uh, that I hope uh, we can move forward more on. I also think we need to continue to move on kicking all the balance of the Russian banks out of any of the international financing system. I think we should go ahead and not simply sanction the top Russian officials, Putin and his, his oligarchs, but the Russian parliament uh, who have paid, you know, frankly, have gone along with this atrocious action of Vladimir Putin. I think every individual member of the Russian Duma ought to be sanctioned. So I think there's a combination of military and economic assaults we can make. I think the, the, the ratcheting down on the economy and the inability of the Russian forces to move forward, um, time is not on Putin's side at this point. And you took part in a classified briefing this afternoon. I know that you can't divulge many details, but what can you tell us about where the intelligence is right now as far as Vladimir Putin's mindset and, and his end goals in this conflict? Well, I'm not going to comment on you, what the intelligence is saying sure. about Vladimir personally, although the, the picture tells a thousand stories. I mean, you know, when you see these pictures of Putin sitting on one end of a table and a, a visiting dignitary or his own military advisory sitting literally, you know, 20, 30 feet away, this is a guy who's been isolated the last couple of years because of COVID. He's very COVID phobic. He has been an autocratic ruler for 20 years. He is not, he, the number of people that he's actually listening to gets smaller and smaller. And you don't have to look far in history to see where despots get isolated, don't get the real information on a real-time basis. I think many of the military leaders may be even reluctant to tell him the truth. Uh, now, that also makes him very desperate as somebody who's uh, backed into a corner that's still got access to nuclear weapons. So this is a very dangerous time, uh, but this is clearly not playing out in any shape, size, or form of what Putin expected three weeks ago. And there seems to be some, some positive development on the diplomatic front with Zelensky saying that peace talks were sounding, quote, more realistic. What's your view? Is there a potential diplomatic off-ramp if Ukraine agrees not to join NATO in exchange for security guarantees? That obviously would be a decision that would have to be made by President Zelensky and the Ukrainian people. I think we would all welcome uh, a diplomatic off-ramp. Um, I've heard that report. I, I've not got any intelligence on it. Anything that would stop 
the murder and mayhem that's taking place in Ukraine uh, would be good for the Ukrainian people, good for the world. Putin is a bully. He's an autocrat. He won't stop with Ukraine. The Ukrainian people are literally paying with their lives to try to preserve the kind of system that we all in America take for granted each and every day. A, a democratic system, a, a liberal democracy, freedom of press, freedom to express your views. That is something that Vladimir Putin wants to squash. And Senator, just in the last minute that I have you, I am curious just to get how your heart felt as you were sitting there listening to President Zelensky really make this appeal, suggesting that the U.S. not take our own interests before the idea of global peace. Did you come away feeling we need to do more, or, or what was your sense? Well, I came away both with enormous compassion for uh, President Zelensky and the images that, that were on that uh, broadcast of the horrible tragedy and I think war crimes being committed by the Russians. And we need to do everything we can to help the Ukrainian people. But the Ukrainian president's goal is to actually get NATO fully engaged in the war against Russia. That is still, I think, for most Americans and frankly, for most of our NATO allies, still a bridge too far. Senator Mark Warner, we thank you so much. Really appreciate you coming on the show. Thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.